Okay, in this exercise, I'm going to show you how to get around in and use the R Studio environment. To get started, I'm going to go to the Azure Lab environment at labs.azure.com, and I'm going to click on Sign In. Up comes my account, and you should have already gone through the registration process in a previous situation, so I'm not going to go into that here, but it will take a minute here. And it says that currently this course that I'm using Yours might say something different, but it's stopped. I have to get it started. So I click on that button to get it started. And it can take upwards to five minutes to get your environment, your as your um, lab environment started. So I'm going to put the recording on hold for a minute while it does this, and then I'll be back as soon as it's got my environment started. Okay, I'm back. My environment is running. I'm going to click on the small computer to the bottom right here. It's going to put a RDP file on my machine. And then I'm going to click on that RDP file. And if you can't find it in your taskbar like I can, you're going to have to go look for it on your computer. Search for RDP. And then I'm going to click on Connect. And ask for the password, which is welcome with a capital W in an exclamation part point. Then I click on OK. Now it's connecting, and I say yes to the scary message. And then up comes my Azure lab environment. And in a minute, up will come all of my programs. Okay. So the first thing you need is you need uh, some data that that your professor will have provided you with. Um, one is called budget data. The other is called sales data. And the other one is a text file. These two data files are what we're going to pull data from, and then this code is what has been pre-written for you to create a bar chart, a line chart, and a histogram, and a, and a pie chart. And um, so, just one minute, one small thing I need to do here that you skip this step for you, all right? Okay, so these are the three files you need. And what you're going to do is you're going to start up R Studio. So find that in your environment. Mine's up at the top right here. Yours is probably in a different spot. And it, if it seems like it takes a while, don't fret because that's just the nature of the beast. But it, in a minute, we're going to find that the R Studio will open up. Okay, it doesn't seem to be opening. Okay, there it is. Now it's opening up. You have to be patient in this phase. It, now it looks like it's hung here, but it's not. It's, it will take another minute to get the R environment up here. Okay, and click on Remind Later. This is a nag screen for me. Just you, if you have it, just Remind Later. Okay. So this has brought up some information from a previous time I used R. We want to start a new project, so I'm going to go to File, New File. Sorry, file, new project. That's what I needed. File, new project. That's what I just clicked on. And then a new directory. And then click on new project. And the directory name I'm going to call environment because I'm showing you how to use the R Studio environment. And then the other thing you have to do is you have to tell it where to put that new folder, that new project. And I'm going to click on browse. And I'm going to click on desktop. And then open. So this is going to put a new folder on my desktop, which is really a, called a project file. And I'm going to click on Create Project to make that happen. Okay. And see how it created the environment folder right here. Okay. Now it's taking a minute to do something. Click on that nag screen to stop reminding. Okay, and um, so here you have your environment. It starts out, 
you might start out with four screens or four sections or three sections depending on how your your R Studio loads. In this case I've got three. I've got this which is called the console. This is where if you want to you can just type your commands and have them execute immediately. You can see error messages immediately um, you know and you can run your program that way and some of the labs you would do might have you doing that method. The other thing you can do is you can expand up at the top right here. This is called the source editor and it's a little more user friendly and you can type in your code here, go back, edit it, reuse it, rerun it. This is really the workhorse of our studio as far as I'm concerned. Although some people prefer just to type all their code down here in what's called the console. Okay, so that's the source editor and I'll show you how to use that in a minute. The global environment shows you all your data files and other assets that you or resources that you're using in your program. And then down here, you can see you've got files, and it's already created an rproj file for this called environment. But you also have a plots tab where you can see all the graphs and charts that you might have created through your R code. These others are more advanced, and, uh, and we won't talk about them right now. But files and plots are two important areas for you to see. Okay, so let's... Um, Let's get some some uh, some code running after we set up this project. One thing we have to do is we have to get our data files, particularly. Let me get rid of this. Get rid of this. Okay. We're going to put budget data in the environment folder, and we're going to put sales data in the environment folder. And just to keep it all together, I'm going to put the source code in there too. Okay. Oh, that's very important. You have to have those data files in this environment folder. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the environment folder and I'm going to see that I've got that rproj file already for this project I've just created called environment. I'm going to click this text file here which I created in notepad and it's got all the code in it that we're going to need. Don't worry if the code looks daunting. It'll make sense at some points in the future. Um, but it's all, it's we need something to work with. So I've copied this, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just paste it right here in the source editor. And there we go. That is our source editor source code right here. So if we want to run this source code, what we have to do is highlight all of the code and then click on the Run button. If you want to do this like a programmer, instead of highlighting it all, in case it, the case if it's really long, you can just go Control-A and at control A that will select the entire page of code all of it no matter how many rows of data you have a rows of code you have and then I'm going to click on the run button see what it does is it takes all that code and it puts it down here in the console which then makes it interact directly with what's called the RStudio interpreter which will then interpret the code and run it to produce what is over here in the right hand side which is the plots and I said there were four plots that it was going to create. It was going to create a line chart. It's going to create a bar chart. It's going to create a histogram. And it's going to create a pie chart. Okay? So now, if I had errors down here, and this is where I'll see them. It'll be in this section in red. I could go back and I could then edit my code in order to fix those areas. In fact, let's, um, let's put an error in here. Let's just say that I wrote budget data in line 18, and uh, instead of budget data, I'm going to run it. And I'm going to show you how I can get an error. It should give an error anyway. Didn't give an error. Why? Oh well. It should have. Let me try something else that I know will cause an error. There we go. See how it's created an error? That's because there needed to be an underscore here under file path for chat for this program to know what I'm doing. Okay, but you see what it did was it created an error down here as a result of this. So I've gone back, I fixed this error to make it file underscore path, and now I'm going to control A and I'm going to run this again. And you can see I didn't get any errors. There's no red. The only red is from the task last time I ran it. So you can see that you're generating a lot of, you know, code statements down here, which 
our which are close to the R Studio interpreter, so that it can in implement what you wrote. So um, now, now that we have this, we might want to do things in our environment. And one is we might want to clean up this window down here. Maybe it gets really long, and we're tired of it being long. We just put our mouse in here somewhere and go Control L. That gets rid of it all, all that code. We could delete and add things if we wanted as well um, in here just by using this like you were a word processor or in, in here I could delete this if I wanted I could retype something in it and I could use it again I can run this code as many times as I want to by selecting it and then clicking on run the other thing I might want to do is I might want to get rid of all of these plots you can see that I've run this a few times so I've got a lot of these you know I ran this two or three times already so and every time I did, it's created these plots, these four plots. So I've got them a lot of times, and some of them might not be very good because I had errors in my code that I had to correct. So I might want to remove everything from the plots window. So I would go here to plots, and what I would do is I would go to clear all. Do I want to clear all the plots? Yes. And then that's got rid of them all. Okay. So this is how I can kind of clean up my environment. Another thing I can do is I can look at my different, um, my different, uh, databases I had budget data if I click on that see how it brings up what budget data had inside it had a category and it had an amount and, I, and I, there wasn't a percentage in the, in the CSV file that we were using this was calculated in my code but at least we know what that database currently has so that we could use these column headings in our code if we want and I'm going to click on sales data as well when I click on that I can see we've got the year and then we've got the sales as well okay so um, so that's another window that you can use in this global environment. The last thing that, um, and one thing I want to notice is you see whenever I clicked on budget data or sales data, it actually had to execute code here in the console um, in order to make that happen for me to be able to see that up here in the source code editor. So now I've got all these windows open. I can, can close them all. And now here I am back in the in the source editor. Okay, now the last thing I want to do is I want to make sure I save everything. And then we're going to go back and reopen. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Save All. And it's asking me right now, it hasn't yet, I haven't saved my source code here, right here. Okay? So it's asking me to save that right now, and I'm going to call that Environment. code and click on save and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file and I'm going to close the project actually I'm going to go to save all it's okay it won't let me so everything's saved so I'm going to go to close project do I want to save the the history yes I do the workspace data yes I go save so now it's closing this project if I ever want to come back to this project again and reopen it, I can do so by going into my environment folder, project folder, and in there, what I can do is I can click on the R project file, and I can I can see it. So I need to just click out of this. Okay, so let's just say some time has passed and I want to come back to work on this project again. I can click on environment. And you can see all the different files it's got now. One is the R history file. That R history file, um, what that contains, and I'm not going to try to open it, but what it does is it contains all of the console commands that executed during my last session. So that can be a really big, long file. There's the R proj file, which pulls everything together into the R studio environment. There's the environment code.r, which was all of my source code in the uh, R environment. And then, of course, the, the, fi uh, the files that I included here was the CSV file and the sales data CSV file as well. That gives you an idea of some of the major files and, and how to use them. So what we do now is we click on the R project file because we're going to reopen this project again. And again, it can take a little while, so be patient. Okay, get rid of that. 
So here's all that again. And if I wanted to then you know go in here, I could edit this. I could add to it. Um, you can even have multiple. Uh, you can even have multiple um, uh, in in you know code windows if you want but I'm not going to go into that now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go control A and I'm going to put my mouse in here and go control A to select all this code I'm going to run it again and there you go I can see that I've got everything that I had there last time okay so that's how you get around in and use the various files and the various elements of the R studio and uh, hopefully you'll have a rewarding time learning how to use some of these coding techniques in your work with large data sets. Thank you. Goodbye.